Hello and welcome to this video tutorial where I'm going to show you how to use the Detect Players function in Tactic Pro 5.4 and above. This is a great new feature which uses artificial intelligence and machine learning to help you automatically create motion paths for players so you can attach graphics to them with just one click. Okay, now I'm going to use some soccer clips for this tutorial but it works just as well with other sports. I've actually already saved these clips as analysis files, which means I have a key set up and an auto track. Okay, let's have a look at what happens in this clip here. You see the blue team get possession. They move the ball down the right wing. But look at this guy here in the middle. He's making a really long break. He ends up on the edge of the penalty box, but is ignored. And I think the chance is missed. Okay, so I want to bring the viewer's attention to the fantastic run that this guy makes. So in the old days before player detect, of course, let's uh, use a graphic, let's say uh, distance run, for example. What I would do, turn on my motion paths and manually create keyframes. Now in tactic, that's uh, not too difficult. I just drag uh, along, add some keyframes. So I'm doing it for this guy's run and that kind of works okay. But it is quite time consuming, particularly if you have to do multiple players. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start again. I'm gonna delete this graphic and the motion path. And I'm gonna go up to here where it says detect players and just press this button. And after a moment, you'll notice several things happening. First of all, it's recognized all the players it can see in the video, put a box around them. And then it starts analyzing the rest of the video. So you can see this yellow bar here and writing motion path that it can see as this player's run there. We just caught up with where the playhead is. If I just play it here, it catches up again and so on. So you can see that every player there has their own motion path and it's in blues tell me that this has been automatically created using the detect players function. So now all I need to do is select the same graphic, drag it over the player detect box and you see that highlight and let it go. And I'm just gonna add a trail on there as well. And that's it. Let's play the video and I'll turn off the motion paths and you can see these two graphics automatically follow the player in a fraction of the time it would have taken me to do that manually. Okay, let's take them out here. But I'm not done there. I'm gonna go back to the beginning, turn on the motion paths again because I want to add some circles over the three players that are tracking this run, the three defending players. So I'll just drag and drop each one, turn the motion paths off and play. And once again, they follow them. Here, I'm just gonna add a region Again, turn on the motion pass. Remember, I can use the letter M key, the shortcut. And again, attach the three points in this region onto each one of these players. Turn off the motion pass, play, and it's there. So you can attach multiple graphics to the same automatically generated motion path. All right, let's take them out here. Okay, so that worked very well on this clip. What I'm gonna do for the rest of this tutorial is talk a little bit more about how player detect works when you might encounter errors, such as players running behind other players, and how to use the inbuilt tools to correct these errors. To do that, I'm going to use this clip here, which is going to be a bit more challenging. First of all, we have every single outfield player in shot. The camera's very wide, so the players are much smaller, and they're much more likely to cross paths. Now, the way Player Detect works is it uses known models of players and compares them with what it can see in the video. It works best when the players are wearing multiple colors. So the fact that we have one team here wearing the same color on their shirt, shorts, and socks is gonna make it even more of a challenge. To test the system further still, I'm gonna set myself the task of attaching a graphic to every single outfield player. Once again, I already have my auto track and my chroma key set up, so I'm ready to use the detect players function. Once again, you'll see boxes appear over the players and my yellow bar in the camera setting start to expand as it works. Now I don't have to wait for this to finish, I can carry on working. So let's get to a position uh, where I want to start adding graphics, let's say here. I'm just going to use circles in this case. So I'm gonna start attaching circles to every yellow player that we can see. Okay, so oh, I don't have to keep reselecting the tool, just drag and drop. Oh, I missed that one, so I'm just gonna deselect and come back on again and reselect tool there. Okay, right, let's keep going. Have I got them all? I'm just gonna turn the motion pass off now to see which players I've missed. I think I've got all the yellow players there, so I can now go to the green players. Here we go, and attach them. And I 
got what I think is all my green players. I'm going to turn the motion pass off again just to check. And I'm going to use the M key here. Oh, I missed two. One there, one there. Press the letter M, turn the motion pass, and there we are. We've got a circle on every single outfield player now. So let's play this forward. So now actually I'm going to scroll to the end where I want to take them out, which is just about um, before he takes a shot. And let's look at this. Now we can see we've got some errors here. Uh, we've got some circles in the wrong place. Some have been left behind and so on. Now you may think at first, well, it's failed here. I'm going to have to do everything manually. But actually, using our tools, you can correct everything and very quickly get it working perfectly. Okay, let's go back to the beginning and look at each one of these errors. First of all, we've got some here. Uh, let's look here. You can see the green and the yellow circles are swap players. We've got the yellow circle and the green player and vice versa. Okay, I'm going to scroll back and turn on the motion pass to analyze why. Now, one useful tip is, you see now we've got motion pass all over the screen here. So it can be quite confusing to see which one's which. So what I'm going to do is go up to motion pass and select keyframes in range. And that just shows me the keyframes within a few seconds. So straight away, it's a lot clearer. If I want to, I can go into the preferences here and actually go into annotations and change the duration of the keyframes in range. Right now it's set to 50 frames. I'm running at 25 frames a second. So that means I can see keyframes within two seconds. I'm just going to cancel out of here and let's have a look at these two. Now what's happened is these two are so close together that they actually merge. And as they separate, the system has not picked up on the correct player. So uh, the graphics are kind of swap players. But that's very easy to correct. I'm just going to scroll forward until they separate again. And I'm going to select both these motion paths at the same time. And I do that by holding down the shift key whilst I select with the left mouse key. And you can see that the keyframes grow in size to show that they're both selected. While they're both selected, I'm then going to scroll back to the point at which they actually swap the splines. And I'm just going to right mouse click on the keyframes to open the correction menu. From here, I select swap splines. And now you'll see when I play forward, the graphics are attached to the right player. Okay, now let's look at this error. We can see here, if I turn on the motion paths, that actually player detect has lost this player for a period here. He's got a spline here, but then it loses him for a while before it picks him up again here. And this is to do with him being the same color. So I have a situation where I have two different splines which are detached. And again, this is very easy to correct. I just select on both these splines using the shift key, right click to call up the menu, but this time I'm going to select merge splines. And that just joins those two splines together. So let's scroll back and you can see that graphic now is still following him. So it's joined the two splines together. Okay, turn off the motion pass and press play. Let's see what happens. There we are, it follows him. It's back onto the automatically generated spline. And I'm just keeping an eye on, see when the next problem occurs. Right, here's one here. So once again, uh, this guy's uh, left his graphic behind. Uh, let's call up motion pass, multiple select, and I can see that basically, again, we need to merge these blind together. Now, the part where it is merged, you can see is green here, to say that that's actually a manually created spline, so I can edit it, I can add keyframes if needed. Okay, let's play this on, let's see what the next error happens. Ah, we've had a swap again. So once again, um, two graphics have attached themselves to the wrong player as the players can converge and then separate. So here, let's get to uh, this point where I can uh, multiple select, so I can select them both, get to the point closest possible where the graphics actually swap, right click on them and swap splines. And now when they separate, you can see the graphics on the right player. Okay, down here we've got an error. Um, we had three players converging together. Now the yellow player has still followed him, uh, but one of the green players has left his graphics behind. So once again, let's scroll back, have a look, and I think I can correct this by using merge splines once again. So I can just uh, select on this spline here, scroll forward to it picks up my player again. Okay, there we go. Shift select, right click, and merge splines. Now, actually, as I scroll back, I think actually the two green graphics actually swap splines as well. But as they're both green, I can get away with that. If it was a green and yellow one, I'd have to swap splines as well. What I am going to do though, just uh, adjust the keyframe manually there. I don't need the motion paths on. There we go. So they come together and they separate well. Okay, so nearly there, but there was just a couple of errors before the graphics went off. Some of the players left their circles behind. 
Okay, let's scroll back. Let's look at this uh, green player in the centre here. Let's see what happens. He's got a spline there. Then he gets lost as the yellow player runs in front of him. And he doesn't get a new spline before the graphics go off. But that's not a problem. I can just scroll back to uh, the end of this spline, select on it. And here, when I right click, I'm going to select Edit Spline. And that converts my spline into manually editable motion path. You can see it's gone green to indicate this and you can even see it has keyframes. So now all I need to do is just manually add some new keyframes. I don't need the motion path turned on for that. I just play forward and so on. Okay, so now at the point the graphics go out. Right, so let's scroll back, have a look at that guy. There we are, that works. Um, I've got the same issue here. I'm just going to edit spline. And incidentally, once you edit a spline, you'll notice that it has multiple keyframes on there. Each one of those are editable, um, but you may find if you need to edit one, you may need to delete several others. And you can do that by holding down a shift key in conjunction with the left mouse key, then right click to open the menu and select delete keyframes. But for now, I'm just gonna turn the motion paths off. Let's move back to that position, drag the graphic, and there we are. Okay, I just noticed this uh, player's left his uh, graphic behind as well. So, uh, well, he's got a new spline there. So I guess it's just momentarily lost him. So I'm just going to right click here, merge blind. That will correct that. Okay, and then the last one, I think there's another one of the green players in midfield. Yes, he gets crossed by the yellow player. So um, his spline's left behind. So once again, right click, edit spline. And I know I just need one keyframe here that will work fine. So let's just scroll back a little bit. Yes, that graphics attach him. Okay, let's go back to the beginning. Let's see how this works. Let's press play. Everything's working fine. And I'm just gonna pause it here, add a region graphic as well, a 3.1. So I just drag the three points onto each player I want to highlight, turn off the motion paths, press play, and there we are. And you can see that I've got every single outfield player tracked there throughout the duration of the action from near the beginning till just when the shot is taken. And that's taken me a fraction of time it would have done using manual keyframes. Okay, so we've got all the players tracked now. Now let's have a look at what this looks like in a virtual stadium. So I'm gonna go back to here, click on the virtual stadium, tool and I'm going to look at it from top down and uh, let's just press play and you see that the player's movement gets represented in the virtual stadium. So this is a great sort of thing for tactical analysis or creating playbooks. Before I go I'd just like to show you something to bear in mind when editing manual keyframes on a spline that you've chosen to edit. To do that I'm going to call up this analysis sequence where I've circled the player in blue here, I've used player detect, but the trouble is he keeps crossing with his defender is well marked and it swap, keeps swapping splines there. Uh, it does it three times there. Again, it swapped back to the blue uh, player and there again, it swapped back to the defender. So what I've got to do here is turn on my motion pass and I'm gonna use the swap splines in three different uh, places. So I'll get to a point where they're separate. I'll use the shift key. I will select them both. Scroll forward to the first point where they kind of swap, which is here, right click, Swap splines, okay. And then we go on again, they swap again here. Uh, they're quite far apart when they swap, so I'm gonna try and get that as close as possible. A bit difficult with this other guy. They're still both selected, so I just right click. Swap splines, one more time. Here they swap again, so just scroll back. There we go, to as close as possible. Right click, swap splines. Right, that should have sorted out. Let's go back and have a look. So what we're seeing now is, yes, the blue circle follows the player, but a little jump just here where are the swap spline points. Let's, um, let's scroll back and have a look, see if we can see that again. You see when he swaps splines. Of course, they were actually quite far away from each other when I did the swap spline. What happens to the graphic sort of jumps? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to edit the uh, spline with the player that's selected here. So let's get to a point where I can just select him, right click and edit spline, all right? So now this is a manually editable spline. But because it was automatically generated, there are many keyframes here, more than there probably would be if you'd manually generated this. So the thing to bear in mind here is when you're editing or deleting keyframes, make sure you're on the right keyframe before you start editing. Otherwise you can get yourself into trouble. 
And the tip to do that is to move between your keyframes using the square bracket keys, right and left. See that I'm moving here using the left bracket key and I'm getting to the point where I think there's a bad keyframe where it jumps. And you can see it's just about there, this keyframe here. So if I move forward, uh, I'm going to select on this and delete this keyframe. And I think that's gonna make this a lot smoother. Let's just see by turning off the motion pass, scroll back a bit and play this through. Yeah, that's improved things a bit more. But I think I could still make this better. Let's turn the motion pass on. I think there's a keyframe which is a bit far from uh, the player here. So I'm gonna go here and edit this keyframe. But the important thing is move between your keyframes using the square brackets, as I say. Uh, don't start adding uh, new keyframes here uh, unless you've got a big gap between them. Okay, let's have a look at that. Yeah, that's much better. Uh, so that's the first uh, swap spine point sorted. Let's have a look at the next one. If I play that now, Yep, bad jump there, so let's have a look at that, see if I can find that bad keyframe, and I'm using the square brackets now, um, and I'd say it's this one here where it sort of jumps. So again, right click, delete keyframe, and now let's have a look at that, scroll back a little bit, press play, yes, that's much better. Okay, let's just get to the last one here, I think there's one keyframe which I can probably uh improve a little bit so i'm not going to delete this i'm just going to move this one but make sure i'm collected on there okay i think that's improved things greatly let's have a look at it from the start so now we've got the circle following the right player a little bit of a jump there but i'm okay with that that's a lot smoother and that's very smooth so I'm happy with that. But obviously this last section here where we've got into the details of editing spline, well, it's up to you how much time you want to spend on that. But hopefully by watching this video, you've seen how much time the detect players function can save you when creating a complex analysis sequence with lots of player tags. So I'll conclude here and thank you very much for watching. Mm -hmm.